I do think that building wealth is mostly about tax efficiency. We are taught to, when we have money, to give it away to other people as quickly as possible, plus debt. But you can actually retain that money and use it to pay yourself over time. When you find out about a trend, even in the stock market, usually it's too late. But also it, it creates this sense of FOMO. 80 to 90% of your investments or wealth should be in things that are a bit safer, 10 to like 15% or 20%. It's things that are more volatile. So if you had the choice of an investment app right now, what would you pick and why and what do they do? Apps like Trading212, they're good for, it's a chopping the tree down. You're keeping the tree and you're living off the apples, which you can of course do indefinitely. I love Metaphor. Officials. Let's wrap yeah. up the episode. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <right. laughs> podcast. You know right. Hello and welcome back to the Money Games Podcast. We are back with a completely different episode today. It's a little bit different. You might see mm -hmm. a couple of familiar faces on the couch, but we're gonna go with Timmy first. Timmy, introduce yourself, man. You've got 15 seconds, gun to head. What do you do? Goodness, um, I'm Timmy Merriman Johnson. I'm a financial educator qualified financial advisor i run mr money jar and i'm big fans of both of you i think you're both great oh you're still alive you're still alive I and am, laura hi everybody my name is laura ann moore and i am a money mindset expert slash financial speaker educator content creator and podcast host and seeing as you said it i am a big fan of you both oh. <laughs> uh, i can't not that would be so out of order I mean, yeah but i do mean it i mean i probably am because you guys are sort of sitting here yeah it would be a bit if we weird weren't. if you weren't wouldn't yeah. it yeah That's okay but we've had lots of input from outside. And you know what? This episode is really designed to like properly help people because mm -hmm. it's like they're actual questions. Because yeah. like we guys all make content. There's all this content out there. And essentially like massive overwhelm for people and they just don't actually get their actual questions answered. Yeah. So it's been amazing. Like over 30 people wrote in and we've got lots of different types of questions. A few really juicy stories coming up as well. Like We love juicy. Wow. Some of the stuff that people do in this world is just very interesting. Um, so we're going to go back in a little round robin. Also, just to kind of show different opinions as well, because we're all different with the way that we think, yep. the way that we create content. And hopefully we can just kind of give that person the best possible answer for them mm -hmm. without it just being like, I think this. Mm -hmm. And so they feel like they have to do it that way. Um, so that's what it's really designed to be. Um, and also, guys, if you are listening to this and you want to get your questions answered, there's an email in the description below. And you can email in your, your stories. If you've got a crazy money story mm -hmm. or you've just got a question, please write in and we will do it on the show. Have you ever interviewed two people before? No, this is really Yeah, annoying. I was just just, uh, just took the thought from my head. At. I was like, who's he, looking, who's he gonna look at? How would you choose? Because we're both just like staring at yeah, you, like, you really hello. Are. Do you know what? It's because I'm on the other side yeah. of you too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was sweating and now I'm profusely sweating. As so. you should. Right. <laughs> so I've just got to, I've got to be on the ball, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be intense. Yeah. Okay. We right. love intense. I might just pick you and then just stare at you. The whole I'll just time. be like this. <laughs> <laughs> third, oh, third really yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my life story yeah, yeah. no no speech just yeah, yeah. She's gonna sit just, just eye pretty. contact yeah literally <laughs> just stare <laughs> you, you, like, you two got me you told me got that. <laughs> all right look first question we had a guy called bearded chef i mean bearded I chef is jokes i mean <laughs> <laughs> i literally was like he has a beard and then he was like oh yeah, yeah, yeah good, <laughs> so he started by saying how can you make money in the short term if you have five thousand pounds to invest i've never invested before and i really want to learn let's start with timmy how do you feel about that i mean the way that i personally invest is i just i use index funds like tracker funds so uh, for people who don't know what they are that's a type of asset that tracks the broad stock market and various investment platforms will let you pay in monthly, almost like a bill or a subscription. And you can take that pot of cash and you can decide, okay, I want to split it into 5,000 pounds a month, put it into um, an index fund. And one of the benefits of that is because the stock market um, has its ups and its downs. If you average your way in, it's called averaging, it means that you don't put in the full five and you just see it plummet. You do yeah. it like piece by piece. He wants it in the short term though, which worries How me. short are we talking? Yeah. He said a year. He's got a year. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm very much, my attitude is like, there is no such thing as like getting rich quick. Like 
even when it comes down to like making money, I do think you can often make some money in the short term, but it's like, if you look at what we do, we technically can make money quite quickly, but we've had years of building up to that. So it's like, when it comes to the stock market and investing, I'm like, you've got to be thinking, in my opinion, 10 years minimum. That's my personal opinion. Oh, I okay. think like it's something you put in and you're growing it for the long term. Like, I don't know, obviously, how much this guy wants or this person. I don't know well, she just said five grand to invest. Yeah. I agree with Timmy's approach, though. Definitely. Oh, no, I agree with the approach. But I think if you're thinking you're going to make like, you're going to put that 5K in and it's going to 10X within the year, that's where I'm like, Big lower ex year expectations. 100%. But also what I'd say is investing, when you start from a small amount of money, which in investing terms, five grand is quite small. Um, you're not going to make that much money on yeah. your money in the beginning. Um, if you want to make money in the short term, then you're going to have to sell stuff to people. You're going to have to sell goods or services. Yeah. Go on. Um, well, firstly, look look at what you enjoy and what you're good at. And you can go online. You can go on um, freelancer services and Etsy and eBay and that sort of thing. And you can look at what people are already selling. If you sell a good or a service, you can make money immediately and then you can invest that. And I think there's this there's this misconception which Laura's kind of touched on, which is you put your money into um, an investment and then within a year mm. you've like doubled or tripled it and that, mm. that doesn't really happen. That's that's trading. Yeah. And which I think you have to be tough. really high risk. Yeah, and yeah. you have to have a really high risk tolerance. Like my tolerance for risk is quite low. So I'm like slow and it's boring and where you get all of like that goodness from investing in the stock market is compound interest right and when you look at all the graphs that show you how your money grows over time compound interest like kicks in at like the 15 to 20 year mark yeah, so it's like that long-term like, thing yeah. yeah exactly so mm -hmm. i think you can invest it but you just got to lower your expectation i think if you want money in the short term yeah you've got to take a different route and it's not investing in the stock market it's like finding a way to actually bring in more money yeah, yeah. i agree and to build on that i would probably say a hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got we it. talking off camera about yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how to not talk over as people. So we 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 know that one. Timmy like that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to build on that one, <laughs> um, I wouldn't invest it at all. I wouldn't even touch it in the stock market if you've got one year yeah. at all. And I wouldn't even do it if you've got three years or four years. I would possibly five years for me or less would go in a high interest savings account. Mm -hmm. I think just simply because you cannot predict what can happen. There was a study done, it's like 46% chance of losing money in one year. And um, that number for me is way too high for mm. me. I need the 90 plus mm. and that's when it's 10 years or more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like the me, Schroeder's study. Yeah, the Schroeder's study, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I think I've said it in like 50 videos now because I'm just like, it's such a good representation of like how long you need, need. to think. You yeah. have to think in decades. Thinking in one year, it's not an investment yeah. for me in, in a way of things. Do you agree, guys? Yeah. Yeah, look, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, we're, we're very lucky. There's lots of different investment platforms. You can invest from very small amounts. Yes. So yes. within the course of 12 months, you can get started. But yes. if you want to start seeing sums that you can live off or like that will exceed the amount that you put in, then yeah. you're going to have to invest for a long time. Yeah. And to build on that, I would say... <laughs> Figuring out what your actual goal is. It's so everybody wants more money. Yeah. Like that is just fact. Like everyone is, oh, I could always do it with more money. Like what does that actually mean? Because if you, you never know, depending on what your actual goal is, putting it in a high interest savings account might be the enough of like a bit more money that you need. But if you're talking like, like I said a minute ago, you want a 5X or you want a 10X your money, you've got to look at different avenues. And it's really interesting because I always find that whenever I tell people about investing in the stock market and you talk about compound interest, everyone is like, oh my God, that's amazing. How do I do it quicker? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. no, no. Yeah. It's a bit like when you look at someone's success, like if you look at Michael Jordan and you're like, oh my God, amazing, like what he does, you don't just get all of his success and all of the goodness and all those amazing deals without the 10, 15, 20 years of like hard work and patience and all of that that he puts in. So you can't extrapolate one part. So like when it comes to growing your money in the stock market, think long term. But if the bigger goal is like big amounts of money quicker, then you have to look at different avenues. Well, yeah. increase your contributions is the only yes. way yeah. you can make it to the number that you want yes. faster. So Definitely. then what, what I would also say is um, like why why invest? There's lots of different reasons why. But when I, when I speak to people, the thing that I say that resonates with them is that with money, because we live in um, like a, a consumer-led economy, we're taught from a very young age that you use money to buy things mm. like clothes, holidays, whatever. And then obviously the things that you need. 
what a lot of people don't realize is that you can use money to buy income as well. So in the UK, there are about 4,000 ISA millionaires. Mm. These are people with, as the name suggests, seven figures or more in their ISA accounts. I think the average balance that I saw was something like 1.7 million or something. If these people take, this is what we call the principal sum. If you take this principal sum and then you invest it in an asset that can produce income, so that can be a fund that pays a yield. It could be a rental property or something. You can live off the money that this money produces. And this is why I think a lot of people, a lot of people know that they want to be financially independent and that they want to have financial freedom, but they don't know the actual mechanics of how you get there. So what I say to people is you're trying to, instead of, instead of chopping the tree down, you're keeping mm. the tree and you're living off the, aff- off the apples, which you can of course do indefinitely. Love that. Yeah. Metaphors, Great. man. Beautiful. Metaphor. I love a metaphor. Visuals. Oh, let's let's wrap yeah. up the episode. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot more questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just a taster. <laughs> okay. I love this, guys. Um, let's stick on this investing hype because we're in. Alison Smith has written in. Best investing apps to buy index funds in 2024. Let's we'll start with Laura on this one. Ooh. Um, I think it depends if you also want to invest in other stuff. Mm-hmm. So like when I first started investing, I got trading 212 because I was like, I want to do stocks and I want to be able to invest in like individual things. And as time has gone on, I've kind of been like, mm, kind of don't want to do that. I'm kind of like just down for index funds. Okay. So I think it depends. Like obviously you have the classic like Vanguard, which like so many people use um, and is very reputable. But then you have things like Invest Engine that can be great for just a range of like ETFs. And they're probably yeah the three that I would say that I recommend. Um, but if you're specifically just wanting index funds and ETFs, Vanguard is great. Invest Engine, yeah, they're probably two of my favourites. Nice. Feels like um, I'm making a favourite. I'm like, oh my god, who have I missed out that I should have said? <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm like, whoever Timmy says me, I also agree with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you so to to build on what Laura said, if you want to keep things fee free, trading two one two, um, for the lowest. Um, monthly contribution that you can make it to an index fund monthly um, uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne oh, they, yeah, they, they, let, they let you invest from £25 a month with Hargreaves Lansdowne you can invest in like funds stocks ETFs so the whole supermarket for funds only but to keep your fees low mm. Vanguard mm. Vanguard has a £100 per month monthly contribution or £500 lump sums but what I would say ultimately is which there you are, need to start the account, don't you? 500 quid to start, open the account is the first thing with Vanguard, right? Um, based on, so I, I can't actually open a Vanguard account because I was born in the US and so I'm like a dual like tax citizen oh. and like the, yeah, the IRS will probably Mad. come for me at some point. So, um, <laughs> IRS. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be running. But, but um, my, my understanding is you can start with the £100 a month contribution or with the five hundred pound lump sum, and it's similar mm-hmm. with HL. You can do the twenty five pound a month contribution to start, or the one hundred pound lump sum. But what I would say to Alison Smith is, I don't know why I full named her like that. Um, <laughs> is, up Alison. Yeah, Big yeah. Up Shout Harry. out Alison. Um, is that um, there? There are actually there are lots of different platforms, and that's great because it means that there's accessibility, but mm-hmm. it does also make it um, a bit overwhelming. So just find a platform and, and just go for it. I, I feel that a lot of people that invest for the first time, it's like yeah. um, trying to explain all the different phone networks to someone. Yeah. They yeah. all fundamentally do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, such a good point. Yeah. And as you, oh, look, I've got analogies for days. Yeah. And so as you build up your confidence, you'll find the platform that works for you. Now, one of the changes that we made at the start of the tax year that we're now in that began on, on the first, on the 6th of April, sorry, is that you can invest into multiple stocks and shares, ISAs within the course of the year, as long as you don't invest more than £20,000 into all of them. Right. So you can start small, try a platform, see how you find it, and then decide which one you want to stick with. I love yeah. that you said that, man. That's such a good point about the phone contracting, because you, you can call people and send texts. Mm. You can buy funds and mm-hmm. buy stocks. Mm-hmm. It just depends on who. Mm. And the difference between them is how much they cost. Yeah. And the fees, really. Mm-hmm. And like that's probably the biggest thing for me is when you're out there is like well it's a combination of two things is like i would usually say to people is like one how big are the fees like that's why i struggled with hl and i actually moved mine from hl to trading 212 not financial advice by the way but 
I did that because of the fees that I was getting on HL for like individual purchases, stock purchases. So fees were a big thing because they add up massively over time. And then the second side of it was like, what is available to me and what type of investor I want to be. Mm. Um, the very best, like no one ever was. Word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> that, was yeah. a, that was a Pokemon reference, by the way. Oh, oh was it? Didn't get yeah. that, not Pokemon. Oh, girl. no. The That's, only one I always got to catch him on. You got it. <laughs> That's a theme song to Pokemon. Producer Sing it Jack to us. gets it. Sing it to us. I want to be the very best. Like no one <laughs> ever was. Brilliant. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. This is good. This is good. No, no, this is way better. I have an additional <laughs> analogy, actually. Okay. On the old phone network, what I always say to people is, "What makes you shop at the supermarket? You shop at why do you shop at Ocado over Marks and Spencers over like Sainsbury's? Great point. It's like the way that the parking is, the way that the stuff's laid out, the style of like the shop. Like some people shop at Lidl because it's cheap, mm -hmm. but so's Lidl. It's ugly in there, mm -hmm. right? But some people don't care. Whereas some people want to go to Marks and Spencers and it's all laid out nice. And it's like, there's so many factors that are individual to you. That doesn't mean you're going to get any better or like, I guess, different quality or sometimes different well, quality. It's the same food. fun, it's the same results. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's like deciding on those things. And like when it comes to picking a platform, it's like, mm. does it have the investment options available that you want? Are they the ones that you're interested in? What are the customer service reviews? Yeah. So I think that's a big one. Huge. Um, and what's the what's the layout of it? Does it have an app? Does it have a desktop? Is it like desktop only? Like, because let's be real, Trading 212 was aimed at traders and mm -hmm. it isn't the prettiest. But yeah. if you're more confident with using it when you get used to it, it's okay. Whereas something like the other ones that are online, like a Hargreaves Lansdowne or a Vanguard, they may be a little bit more user-friendly, but it's like there isn't a right or a wrong. Mm. And I think some people get so hung up. I know I did when I first started investing. It yeah. took me ages to pick a platform. And now the whole multiple stocks and shares ISA, I think, helps remove that. Because you're like, if you do one and then you're not happy with it, <laughs> you just open up one. Yeah. You're all good. I did it like stick 20 quid in three. Yeah. And then play around with them for yeah. a bit. And then, okay, cool. The one yeah. you don't want, you take the money out. Yeah. Yeah. It it's good they made that change because yeah, they, they, they made stock, they brought uh, the ISA accounts in line with pensions because yeah. there's no limit on the yeah. number of pension accounts you can have as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which is wild, by the way. We'll get on to pensions later. <laughs> I'm on track to have over £5.5 million in retirement. And I'm not saying this to brag, guys. I'm saying this because I am an everyday person just like you. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that it's actually possible for you to build life-changing wealth too. No matter where you're at on your journey, your age, your knowledge, or even your current financial situation. So, Sammy, how do I sort that out? Well, I've created something super cool, which literally takes one minute of your time. I've left a link in the show notes to a free money person personality quiz, which will provide you guys with a free tailored content plan based exactly where you're at on your financial journey. Once you filled it out, you're sent the steps to start getting you results from day one. And then once you're ready, you can then move up to the next step very easily too. It's not judgy in any way. It's totally free to do. And it's actually really good fun too. Simply head down to the show notes and click the link there where it says to do the quiz and get your free money action plan right now. Now back to the show. So if you had the choice of an investment app right now, what would you pick and why and what do they do? Okay, so apps like Trading212, they're good for fee-free investing and buying individual like stocks, but they also offer funds on there as well. HL is the UK's biggest um, investing platform, and so you get the full breadth of products that you can buy. So you've got stocks, funds, ETFs, bonds. You also have the full suite of accounts as well, so GIAs, which are general investment accounts, Stocks and shares ISAs, pension accounts, and the junior variations of stocks and shares ISAs and pension accounts as well. But Vanguard is a good low fee platform mm -hmm. if all you want to do is just stick money in every month and pay into funds. Um, I, I believe they have the lowest uh, management fee in the UK. And super friendly as well, as well from what, yeah. I, what I've used it for. And I think they just launched an app. They, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. I heard good things. Yeah, I've heard good things actually yeah. as well. I haven't downloaded Not it yet it. though. No, neither have I. I don't Come use on. it for that. I invest into Vanguard funds, yeah. but I don't use Vanguard to buy the funds. All oh, right, oh. it's cheaper if you do it through them. Interesting. Interesting. Don't say that to me, Timmy. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just had the life. Thing. <laughs> I just figured I've You're moved like, everything over. Oh. I don't think I'm to do it. I've just done a video on that as well. Great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be that back. Sorry, Daniel. It's going to be quite a lot of editing going it's on. Cheaper if, it's cheaper if you do Vanguard funds through Vanguard. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So, sorry. Man. Look, the facts are the facts. Bast in my bubble. I've written the whole script. 
appropriate. Okay, well, that's <laughs> good to know. At least I'm not putting out wrong information, which go. is uh, yeah, definitely uh, some FCA problems in that. <laughs> Let's move on to another question. Um, it was from Dale Rigby. Love Dale. Yeah. Great name. I know. Who, who's another famous Dale? I feel like I know one. So like Dale Winton, supermarket Dale Winton. street. Which, by the way, every time I go around the supermarket, because I now either do little shops or I shop online because I live in London, if I ever go to a big supermarket, every time I'll pretend I'm on supermarket sweep. Every time. It's such a Remind fun me, game. please. My brain's gone fudge. Isn't it like I know. You've got it's a two time- people. There's like two teams, multiple teams. There's oh, always two people and you run around. And- the red and the no, that's thingy ready, thing. steady cook. That's ready, steady cook. No, you go around a supermarket and you have a trolley and it's like, go find this item, this item. And you have to go along and people are running around a supermarket and it's crazy and it's thrilling. <laughs> it's really old it's school. It's very 90s. Really? really? 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably was about four. Do you know what? I think it's one it. of them. I've got to see it again. Yeah, I've got to see In it. In my head, I've got it. the peppers and the. No, that's, that's ready, steady That's definitely ready, steady cook. With, yeah. um, which you will do Angel after Harriet. you've bought stuff in the supermarket. Then you'll cook, cook it, hopefully. There you go. Mate, the 90s TV, man. Just the bring 90s, full back. stop. Bring it back. <laughs> bring it, bring Just back bring it back. back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would actually yeah. love that. You know what? Like making, they're making remaking Art Attack, guys. Yeah, but Neil Neil is sadly past RIP. I know. Who are they going to bring back in place? Well, there's a lot of rumours about Romish and everyone went mad about it. Oh, mm. he's not an artist, is he? No. But, Controversial. Uh, yes. So, yeah, anyway. Sorry, 90s right. shows. Dale Rigby. <laughs> Um, if you had 20k saved up where would you start to turn it into financial freedom not really the best and easiest of questions but i think we get the gist right so to me what would you do yeah i guess we we touched upon this in the previous answer which is um you can use money to buy stuff so you can use it to buy goods and services Mm-hmm. But you can also, and you you can use it to buy things which take money out of your pocket. So if you buy, um, I use a PlayStation for example. You buy the PlayStation, but then you also need to buy games and controllers, and there's microtransactions and stuff. So, in financial terms, we would call that a liability mm-hmm. because it takes money out of your pocket over time. There's nothing wrong with stuff taking money out of your pocket over time. It's just what it does. You you obviously get enjoyment out of the PlayStation as well, but you can also use money to buy things um, that put money into your pocket over time, mm-hmm. and we call those assets. So what you want to do with that, twi- and that's a really great sum to have um, saved up, is yeah, to is. put the 20K into things which appreciate in value and pay you to own them. And a few of these things could be a savings account that pays you interest Mm -hmm. it could be a fund that pays you a yield it could be a rental uh, a a rental property that um because i mean i don't know if like 20k is enough for like a property maybe in like doncaster away or something so you can you can put it into property (laughs) and then you you can rent the property out and then that pays you money Yeah. yeah so it's just a different way of thinking about money because we are taught to when we have money to give it away to other people, like as quickly as possible, plus mm-hmm. debt. And that serves the people that are trying to sell us things, but you can actually retain that money and use it to pay yourself over time. And then that money grows and grows and grows. And then after a while, you'll be able to live off the money that your money is making. And that is what we call financial independence. I mean, do we even need to follow it? Like, Probably not. I'm not sure what I leave? can add to that. Uh... <laughs> Woo. You could give it to me. Brush that. <laughs> <laughs> Brush that. Yeah. And Laura will put money in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my best in God. <laughs> no, no, but, no, but the thing is... Uh, actually, you go. No, no, I, was, no, no. I was just going to cut you up. That's not how this works. <laughs> no, but if, if, you, if you pay for education... Mm. That's education's an asset. Oh, yeah, man. I was going to literally that say that was my use... one thing, lad. Oh, that was that was oh. why. That's Stole what I was going to say. Sorry. So okay. you could invest right. it in yourself. You could, yeah, you could. But that looks that, that does look different for everybody. I do think, like, you mm. could. It, it's a hard one, right? Because you could potentially take some of that money or all of that money and invest it into setting up your own business. Mm. If you have an entrepreneurial mind or you have a skill that you can sell, and that twenty k could be an amazing amount that would then bring you so much more money in the future. But just as any other kind of investing, there's risks involved. Yeah. But yeah, investing in yourself, I think, is 
important. So here's, I'm going to break this up a little bit. I'm going to give a little different answer. Let's say I had 20K, I'd put 10K in a higher interest savings account, for example. I'm just going to give an example of what I would do if I had it. 10K, I'd call that my emergency fund in my head. It doesn't exist. 5K, I'd invest into myself to then bring back more money coming in. So courses, books, personal development, and then I tuck five grand in index funds. Nice. And I think by doing that, I'm giving myself ability to attract more money, securing myself and mm. moving myself forward all mm. in one fell swoop rather than most people will just kind of leave it sitting yeah. in one account. Diversification at its finest. Yeah, and if you will. There's something Taking I know you. Elements of you yeah. guys. <laughs> there's something I know you can definitely speak to, Laura, which is when you're investing in yourself and deciding what to learn, like Ikigai. Yeah. Like, oh, if, if you could. Yeah, yeah, Ikigai is good. I, I do think that when it comes to investing in yourself, whatever that looks like, people don't think enough about what the, their actual why is with mm -hmm. money. Like, why are you making money? What is it you want? Like, don't let the focus just be the money. Like, let the focus be what money can do for you. And then that will yeah. help yeah, yeah. indicate how what that split is of that. Like, really understanding, like, what are the things that I love? What are the things that I can make money from? What are the things that people need? What are the things that make me happy? Like, that combination, I don't think we sit down enough and actually sit and think about that. And actually there is a sweet spot. And I do think as well, like I'm a big believer that not everybody should be like business owners and not everybody should be entrepreneurs and not every, but we're so lucky that we live in a world now where with access to the internet, that's kind you of, can we, be. you can't, you can't. And it doesn't, it could be on the side. It doesn't have to be a full-time thing. It could be a part-time <laughs> thing. But I think really just taking a, a moment to be like, what do I actually, why do I want to do more with this money like yeah. what even does financial freedom mean to me yes we can understand it on a numbers basis i need this much to live mm -hmm. and therefore i need this much in assets but like what does that actually mean to me like what does is it being able to work three days a week so that you can pick your kids up is it like for me mine is to be able to go traveling and work at the same time like because i love my job but i also want to see the world yeah so i have to make sure that my money does euro that for laura me. like out in <laughs> euro full girl flex. summer yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's been this year. Yeah, no, it has. Yeah. Every time I'm like, where is she now? Like it's not a funky dress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm into it. I think a well, good thing as well. Like I, I came across this video from Scott Galloway. I Scott Scott Galloway. I don't know what the study was, but basically it was talking about like once you hit a certain threshold of wealth, yes. you don't actually get any happier. Yes. But he was saying that your uh, happiness exponentially increases up to a certain point of wealth. Yeah. Um, so that, that he's talking about the hedonic treadmill. There. Thank you. So, um, That's it. And there's a great documentary on uh, Netflix called Happy, which kind of talks about this. So the difference in happiness between someone who earns, I probably have to apply inflation to it now, yeah. but yeah. the documentary, <laughs> the difference in happiness between someone who earns $5,000 a year and $50,000 a year is huge. Yeah. But past that, it's like how much more fancy can your genes get? How much, And particularly technology. Technology has been hugely democratizing for people because now right. we probably use the same phone as like the richest person on the planet yeah. because like an iPhone is an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got the same phone as Elon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 really, it's really like weird, weird time to be Take living that, in. Elon. Yeah. So um, yeah, so definitely when, when you when you're first um, making money, it's about getting yourself up to that point where your quality of life is yeah. of a certain standard. And then past that, you just, you've got to focus on happiness and, and just living the life that you want to live, I think. Yeah. And I saw this really interesting podcast. I don't know who it was, but it was an older woman and she's like totally a billionaire. Like she's sold and met like so many businesses, so successful. Someone was like, you know, how does it feel to be this wealthy? And she was like, the most wealthy I felt, wealthy, well, wealthy, mm. wealthy, was when... I was however old and I'd made like a good amount of money and I walked into a bookstore and I didn't have to look at the price of books and I bought 10 books and it felt amazing. She was like, that's the most wealthy I felt. She was like, it got to a certain point where all the extra numbers were just extra zeros in my bank account and it hasn't made me feel any different. She was like, you know, I can go to fancier places. I can hire an island instead of hire, you know, just hiring her in a room in a hotel. But it's this idea of there is, I think, a plateau. Mm. There is a threshold. And if you swap all of your time to make more money, you don't end up being any happier and you run the risk of it going the other way because you have less time for leisure and the things that make you happy, which is like outside of what is actually you're doing with your time. So I think, 100%. yeah. Like, I love you said that because like a big thing for me, which I spoke about with Anna actually just now recently on, uh, on another episode, you'll have to tune into that one, guys. <laughs> um, uh, basically like for me, once I hit this, like 
I don't want to look at how much my shopping was and also can I get someone to come around and clean my house yeah. and those two things for me it was like if I get to that point I'm pretty happy and I probably smashed yeah. it in, in my eyes yeah. and that was what I set myself like seven eight years ago and then that happened recently and I was like well done for you nice and I just felt better do you know what I mean and then weirdly though you get to that point and then you go what's next, what's next? you'd be so surprised it's really weird because you get to goals and goals move yeah i think it's okay for goals to move as long as you are aware that part of the enjoyment comes from the process one Mm. when you get Mm. there you actually are grateful for being there you don't hit it and then you're already on the next thing you get there and you go this is cool. Check yeah. me out. And you yeah. bask in it for a bit. Exactly. And then you go, oh, I would like a, <laughs> a minute. Yeah. And then you say, <laughs> I would like, I'm ready. I would like a new purpose or, you know, a new goal. And you're aware it's coming from a place of not like, I must have it. I'll be happy when. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, I might as well have something else to work towards. However, I'm really happy with the situation that I'm in. So it's like, that's where I think the difference is. Because if you just hit a goal like now, hopefully you'll live for quite a lot longer, mate. So, yeah, what and am I going to do with myself? Exactly. Just but, shop. Just, <laughs> just shop and have someone clean your house. Yeah. Um, I think the awareness of like practising gratitude for when you reach those places yeah, yeah, um, is really important. So if we bring this back to the original question, money is a tool. My guy, I thank you. <laughs> money is oh, yeah, a tool cool. that enables you to live your life. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To live the life that you want to live. So, to use it yep. and love the journey. And know what you're working towards. And know what you're working towards. Wrap up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sharima has asked, I've just got a big pay rise. Well done, Sharima. Bosh. I'm very happy for you, Sharima. Well done. I've been working so hard for many years and I'm so happy with my new salary, which is 100K. Bing. Slay. I know. Well done. <laughs> 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 slay. Yes. Gotta stop I saying. am, however, worried about the tax brackets. What advice would you guys give on this? I'm not the best person to speak to about that. I'm doing my financial planning diploma currently. I haven't got to the tax section. So. <laughs> okay. So. I'm basically looking at Timmy right now. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, when it comes to tax bra- brackets, the first. 12 and a half K that you make, you don't pay any tax on. Then between 12 and a half and, and 50 K, you pay a 20% rate mm-hmm. on, on, on that amount of money. And then between 50 and 125, you pay um, a, a higher rate of tax, which is 40%. And then anything over 105,000 is 45%. So 100 K after tax, you're taking home, um, I think it's, it's about 60 grand a year. It's like five five grand um, a year take home so if you want to retain um the money that you've made from the pay rise then the simplest way to do that is to pay more into your pension Mm -hmm. so there's a a phenomenon called lifestyle creep which is where you get paid more and so you bring your expenses up to meet the amount that you've been uh, your pay increase but the way that you actually build wealth over time is by locking in your lifestyle and then the more money you get, the more you save and the more you invest. 100%. And the great thing about, if if you can take some or all of that pay rise and put it into things like investments or pension, or particularly pensions, you you actually get to keep all of the tax because pensions are are highly tax efficient. That's salary sacrifice, right? To put it into your pension or Um, just paying more into your pension? Just paying it more into your pension. Um, Because when when you pay into a pension, you get get tax relief. So why have there been a lot of conversations recently say someone's earning £105,000 and they want to bring their salary down? And is that due to childcare and problems there? So um, there are some benefits that you lose when you earn over that 100k limit but what happens when you earn over 100k is that for every two pounds over 100k you earn you lose a pound of your personal allowance Mm -hmm. and so for some people it's like that between the 100 and 120,000 um kind of earnings thresholds the tax is quite aggressive Mm -hmm. so some people just choose to sweep it all into pension yeah fair enough i I would too well look a massive shout out to sharima well done on that pay rise and if you want to take any advice that, that Timmy gives, because me and Laura know bugger all about that bit. Um, <laughs> Actually, rein it in. Yeah, or bugger sorry. all. Don't, don't push it. I know right. a bit. 
I wanted to, I just wanted to see. Do you know what? I wouldn't have been able to have put it. I did know what it was. Yeah. I definitely would have messed it up and I didn't put it, never yeah. would have put it as independently no. as to me. So. And also, it's actually wild when you like dive into tax and the way they break it down. Mm. Like, you know, there's all like these different sweet spots for like, oh, but if you earn this, you might as well not earn yeah. this. You might as well just earn below or just earn over or put more. So it's like, I do think that building wealth is mostly about tax efficiency. Oh, yeah. It's like just learning and understanding that. Yeah, ISIS, baby. ISIS, baby. 100%. Okay, so now we're going to do a story that was sent in to us. Um, and it's a bit of an interesting one, to be honest with you. Um, okay, are you guys ready for this? I'm locked in. Okay. When... <laughs> We're definitely going to have to cut that bit. <laughs> okay, guys, are you ready for this? Great. Were you, were you about to say something? Then, you? No, I just opened my mouth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Third time lucky. <laughs> okay, guys, are you ready for this? Yep. Brilliant. When my partner and I split up, I didn't know what to do with myself. I made cryptocurrency investments, and after the crisis... After the crash, I panicked and sold, losing £5,000. After that, I felt overwhelming grief and thought I could make it back. Bought back in at the end and ended up even losing more. By the end of it, I have now lost over £28,000. This has hurt me, my pride, and I've stopped living properly because I haven't known how to deal with the situation. I never gambled before in my life, and I was susceptible to a lot of psychological elements that make you go back in. I've talked to my family, but set... But this setback has me feeling so ashamed about it. I feel as though I've made one of the biggest mistakes in my life and losing £28,000 has just made me feel awful. I feel foolish and immature. Wow, he's going for it. I don't know in an adult life that £28,000 should ever be missed. But it really does. Okay, I'm not going to cut that bit. Please cut that bit. Um... So currently, I really need help with financial planning and putting that money into the right kind of perspective. I don't feel like I deserved or live to. I don't feel like I deserve or enjoy life anymore because of the losses that I've made and it's been pulling me apart. What would you guys do? Oh, that's shit. Oh, mm. I don't know if I can say that. You can. Oh, that's totally. shit. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Can I touch on like the emotional, like psychologically part first yeah. before kind of going into the numbers? I think that the way that we view money has a massive impact on the stories that we then tell ourselves, which is what keeps us stuck in that energy. Obviously, it is not ideal to lose 28K. Nobody wants to lose any money at any point. And it probably feels, I guess, harder knowing that it was a conscious choice, putting that money in, seeing it drop versus buying a house and then maybe the, you know, the housing market crashing and you selling at the wrong point and losing 30K. It's, it's, it probably feels different because of the connection to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm a big believer that like anyone's financial journey is not a trajectory linear. It is not a, tra a linear trajectory. <laughs> Let me say that again. I believe that anyone's fa like financial journey does not have a linear trajectory. So you're not just going to make more, save more, invest more. You're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The best thing that you can do is learn from it. But we can never shame ourselves into better habits. Like the the guilt and the shame that he's probably feeling around what's happened is only going to reduce confidence in doing anything that's going to then progress, like help you progress financially. So I think there's a huge piece around like working on your relationship with what happened to be able to be like, it's happened. What can I learn from this? And like anybody could have been subject, like subject to that. Like there's so many factors involved that, like you said, you know, the psychological element around like jumping back in. And in my opinion, something like crypto, it's higher risk. It's a lot more volatile. It's a lot, you know, it's got, it's got a gamified element. Yeah. Um, and it, it does tap so into your, your psyche. Yes. Yeah. So I mm -hmm. think the key thing before even like stepping into any kind of financial plan is working on your relationship with what happened and being okay, like coming to terms with it Yeah. and forgiving yourself because not forgiving yourself, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to progress in any healthy way. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. I, would say. I completely agree. It's it's just a, such a like I've seen it happen to so many people. Yeah. Like literally multitude of different friends have lost similar amounts really? just from like going for it on crypto and jumping in when it's in the news and then it's at the top and then them losing out and then them doing more because their mate Dave down the pub said yes. this brand new altcoins come out and yeah. 
I need to go into it. And these things are just so extremely highly volatile. Yeah. That putting all of your eggs into that basket or that bit, you know, I'm not going to say a name of a cryptocurrency, but a coin or whatever that might well be. Just then it's exactly the same with the stock market. I do see it, but then just with cryptocurrencies, it's just like a lot more volatile. Yeah. Um, like if you just put all your eggs into Apple and Apple has a bad day, you're, you're up shit's Creek without a paddle. So it's like, for me, it's like understanding that process and then diversifying and having a selection or a section of your portfolio, a total amount that you're mm -hmm. kind of happy with it being high risk. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to lose that mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. thinking if I put 20 grand in, I'm going to be sitting on a beach in Ibiza mm -hmm. with 250 grand sitting mm -hmm. in my account because that's really not the case for the majority of people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what do you think, Timmy? Yeah, I agree with everything you both said. I think when we do things that we're ashamed of, we can sometimes internalize that. But I've, I've found mm. um, Brené Brown's work around shame really useful for this. I don't know this. She's amazing. Um, really? She's done a series of TED talks, but she's she's almost like an an expert in shame. And yeah. and the way and what she says is that you need to divorce the thing you've done from um, who you are. So you might say like I did an immature thing, but that doesn't make you an immature person because you're not reducible to any one thing that you you do. You're like this multifaceted, complex person that will constantly live and grow and evolve. So I'd say watch oh, Brené Brown's uh, yeah. TED talks. The second thing I'll say, and, and I will name a cryptocurrency, it's the first one that was ever created, which was Bitcoin. If you read the Bitcoin white paper, which is like 12 pages long, you see that the, the creator or creators of, of Bitcoin were trying to make a form of money, i.e. something that you use to buy things. And what's happened since it was created is people have realized, hold on, if I buy it and I hold on to it, then I can sell it to someone else. But crypto um, is, is fundamentally a non-productive asset. Mm -hmm. So all that means is once you have it, the only way you can make money off it is by selling it to the next person for more than what you bought it for. And as the prices go up and up and up, it gets to the point where the next person doesn't want to buy it from, it, mm -hmm. from you anymore. And then you have to sell it at a loss. So, and then this leads into a third thing I'll say is, the person who asked the question may have lost that money. That's now a lesson that they can learn and take forward to make sure that they don't do that again. And over the course of their lifetime, they can make back 28 grand and then some mm -hmm. Yeah, from the lesson they've learned and from, and from the education. I think the final, final thing I'll, I'll say is that- Part four. <laughs> uh, Isaac Newton. Yes. Like literally the guy who discovered gra gravity is also famous for losing lots of money in investments. So even like super, super smart people fall prey to that sort of thing mm. Mm. it's the allure isn't it yeah, yeah. i allure. think it's really easy to be pulled into especially if you are around people that have those conversations like you go down the pub and everybody's talking about it like as a woman i find that whilst the conversation around investing is definitely getting more i i don't have girlfriends talking about bitcoin i don't i know very few women that invest in it anybody that i do have a conversation with about crypto or anything like that is usually a man totally mm. fine but what i found is even being in the financial space i've had like finance bros come up to me and be like you're stupid why are you invest in the stock market you should be investing in crypto like if you see my tiktok that's like 50 percent of all the comments Gillet wearing i don't actually look at their accounts but i should <laughs> <laughs> um but it's this idea of you feel like you're missing out on something and it's this whole idea of jumping on trends. A, when you find out about a trend, even in the stock market, usually it's too late. Mm. But also it it creates this sense of FOMO. And like I had it one time where I jumped on, do you remember the game stock trend? Oh yeah. Yeah. I jumped on that, lost a hundred pounds. Not exactly like a big deal, but I was like, I had the moment afterwards. I was like, oh, I just got lured in because of FOMO. Mm -hmm. And I was like, never doing that again. So it's like, it's easy it's to expensive do. expensive lesson, but it's a lesson in itself. Exactly. Even if it's 28K or 100 pounds. Exactly. Learn that learn. lesson. Yeah. Yeah. And there's this concept called, um, I can't remember what investing company it's from, but it's called Core Satellite. So you have the core, which should be like 80 to 90% of your um, investments or wealth should be in things that are a bit safer, 
medium to lower risk so things like e index funds and etfs and stocks and then the satellite the little bit that goes around the edge which is like the 10 to like 15 percent or 20 percent is things that are more volatile that you feel more comfortable with that could be bitcoin or crypto that could be ah, oh, it could be collectibles whatever it is but your majority of your investments is like in something a lot more sturdy it's exactly what i do yeah i've got 80 20 yeah so I do 80 percent index funds 20 percent five percent crypto 15 percent individual stocks yes yeah. And that's like the way it's set up. And as I move into later life, I might add bonds into that. But that's like literally myself yeah. right now. And it's done me well. Nice. So, but then I, like, you don't even need to have to do that. Yeah. Just buy a global index fund and you could just be fine and crack on with your life because you're still investing. For me, that's like investing in human progress. Andrew Craig talks about this all the time. <clears throat> and I just think it's such an eloquent way of looking at it. It's just like, Will humans get better as people? If the answer is yes, then a global index fund solves that for you and you can go on with your merry day and you don't have to be like this investor picking individual things or trying to find the new coin out there or new hot Amazon that's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. You can just do that and, and crack on. What, what, what do you think about that, Timmy? Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of global index funds as well. And um, the reason why I choose global rather than S&P 500, which is the other like popular, like the, the US's index, is that different countries shift all the time. So 30 year, around 30 years ago, Japan comprised almost half of the total stock market volume in the world. And America comprised about a third. Now America comprises two thirds and Japan is like a tiny fraction. Tiny, I think it's yeah. less than 10%. So another analogy, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, in, instead of betting on like one team in, in the um, Premier League, you can just like bet on oh, all of them. Yeah. yeah. And then whoever's top, like the, the global index fund will just reflect that mm. in its composition. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Okay. Well, look, unlucky about the 28k i totally get it but there are some fantastic ways that you can improve mm -hmm. it like we did one the other day actually on our financial horror story series that we're doing at the moment and the guy was already doing all the right things and then got a lured mm. in and then it took him a while but i think he got lured in at 19 and then sorted it out by he was 21 yeah. so then now he's got like 40 plus years of compounding ahead of yeah. him yeah. so he's going to be great but he's learned that lesson i think it was like 10k i think i think all of us come at money from a position of scarcity like that the 28k <clears throat> is gone forever and by the way i'm not trying to trivialize it because i've never lost 28 um k before so but like you have your entire life to make and lose money mm, yeah and like especially like when, when you run a business like you'll have like a bad year and a good year so mm. if you if you look to the future and be like i can recoup this money back then i think that's a more positive way to, to look at it 100 percent. yeah thanks guys for obviously your input today i think it's been pretty good fun and really nice to hear like different perspectives of stuff and guys obviously anyone listening to this if you do want your questions answered by laura timmy and less so myself as well these two are just <laughs> way better than me at answering these questions there is an email in the description below you can send it in and um we will hopefully answer it if we have time <laughs> <laughs> just being honest i don't yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but please do send them in and if you've got any stories like that as well um we'd love to know uh, from losing money uh, anything that's happened to you um but please do send it in thanks very much we'll be back next month with another ask me your money questions